Hi, I'm Cheryl. And I'm Manny. And welcome to the Sewing Room Channel. I'm going to demonstrate how to make this pretty Christmas toaster cover. I'm using piping on the edges in the seams, but that's just an option. You don't have to use it. So let's get started. You will need the following supplies. Fabric for the outside, one half yard. Lining for the inside, one half yard. Cotton batting. Make sure whatever package you buy your cotton batting in, that it covers an area that's at least 18 inches by 42 inches. Binding. You will need a strip of fabric that's two and a half inches wide by 24, or you can buy your own bias tape to use and if you do that, you will need one package. Piping is also an option, and you would need one package. These measurements should fit a standard toaster, but always make sure you measure your toaster before cutting into your fabric. So for the front or outside fabric, you're going to cut two pieces 11 and a half inches wide by 9 and a half inches high and one piece 7 inches wide by 27 inches long. Lining, you'll cut them the same measurement as the fabric for the outside. Cotton batting, one 7 inch wide by 27 inch long and then two 11 and a half inch wide by 9 and a half inches long. Before you purchase any supplies or cut into any fabric, make sure you measure your toaster. The measurements that I'm giving in this tutorial is roughly for a standard size toaster. Mine is smaller, so I had to make some adjustments. So here's how you would measure your toaster. For the gusset, that's the piece that goes up over the top, you want to measure from the countertop up over any dial or handle on the side, over the top, and back down to the countertop. Then add about an inch. Then for the height in the front for your front and back pieces, measure from the countertop up to the highest point on your toaster then add an inch and that would be the height of your toaster cover. To measure the width across the front, measure from the side all the way across out past your handle or dial that you have over here and then add one inch. Layer your fabrics in the following way. So for the front and back sections, you want to place your lining down first. So place that down. Then your cotton batting on top of that. Then your fabric for the outside. Let me get it apart here so you can see it. Lay that back side down. So you're looking at the pretty side. So again, lining, cotton batting, and your outside fabric. You do that for both the front and back section. And you do it the same way for your gusset. After layering your fabrics, then scatter straight pins all over the top to hold the layers together so that you can do some quilting stitches. And this holds everything together. So here are some suggested quilting stitch patterns. You can go side to side and two or three inches apart and then top to bottom or you can go on a diagonal. So you would start in the corner and go from one corner to the other and then turn it and do the same thing going the other way. Here is the side to side and up and down pattern using the serpentine stitch and it's a wavy line. Most computerized sewing machines have one. You can also do it on a diagonal. If you have a walking foot, I recommend you use that when you're doing your quilting stitches 
What this foot does is it helps to prevent the layers of fabric from shifting apart and stretching out of shape so you don't get little pin tucks in it. You can still do those stitches with a regular presser foot, but just be careful that your fabric is not puckering. After you've done your quilting stitches, you want to round the two top corners of both the front and back sections. So take anything that's round that you may, might have and just trace around it. Go over to the other corner and do the same thing. Then with either a rotary cutter or a pair of scissors, just go ahead and trim the two corners off on both the front and back sections. Now, you can't see the quilting stitches very well on here because I used matching thread. I used red, but you don't have to do that. If you want your stitches to show the pattern that you've chose, you can use the green, the blue, or the yellow, or whatever is in your fabric. But if you want to see what my stitch pattern looks like, here it is from the lining side. To stitch the piping on, use a one quarter inch wide zipper foot. Stitch the piping on both pieces for the front and the back of the toaster cover. Stitch on the edge, the top edge, and the two sides. Do not stitch on the bottom section of the toaster cover. As you are stitching, place the edge of the zipper foot on the raw edge and stitch slowly, especially when going around corners and lining the, the edge of the piping up as you go. And this is what they should look like when they're done. Pin the gusset on to one side of the toaster cover. When you're pinning it around the corners, you're going to want your pins a lot closer together and just ease that fabric in around those corners. Then stitch one quarter inch seam all the way around. And when you're done, here is what the piping looks like. To bind the raw edges, select either a zigzag stitch or any other overlock stitch that you may have on your sewing machine and go all the way around the raw edge. Take your strip of fabric for the binding, fold it in half, and press it the full length of the strip. Place the binding on the inside of the toaster cover and start on one of the side sections, the narrow, the gusset side section. Take the end of your binding strip and put it a little ways past center. Begin stitching over here at the seam and stitch all the way around to the other seam and you're doing a one quarter inch seam width all the way around. Then overlap the two ends and cut about a quarter inch to a half inch overhang. I usually cut mine a little bigger just, just in case I do an oops and then I need a little extra. So go ahead and trim the excess off. Bring the two ends together and you're going to bring front sides of the fabric together. Pin it and stitch a quarter inch seam along here. 
finger press the seam open, fold it in half, and finish stitching it down. At your ironing board, fold the binding down and then press the edge all the way around. Then fold the binding over to the front side, pin it down all the way around, and after pinning, then stitch close to this binding edge right here all the way around. Well, here it is. It's all done. To brighten your kitchen during the holiday season, you can even make a matching pot holder that you can hang on the wall, a dish towel, and even covers for your refrigerator door handles. To get the links to the tutorials to make these items, check below the YouTube screen. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, would you please click on thumbs up? And don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed yet, click on that red button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Click on the little bell and enter your email address so you'll receive notifications about my latest video. I'm Cheryl. This is Manny, my husband, and this is our wonderful little Scotty. Thanks for watching and happy sewing.